Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Good morning. Are you guys excited to be here today? Because I sure am. Um, one of the things we get to do, of course, is hear the word of God. Second Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, All scripture is breathed out of God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. We believe in the Bible here. We believe that it speaks to us. Amen? So here's the big question. Are you reading your Bible daily? And there's some people first that they said yes, and for the people that are, great. For you that aren't, be encouraged, because this is how we have a relationship with God. So this is where we start, letting, hearing from God through worship, through the sermon, and through his word. And I thank God that we have that. Would you stand with me? And I'm going to pray about that right now. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you that you've given us your word, and I know that, that we need to get into it even more. I ask that we be a church that reads and spends time with you daily. Thank you, God, that you want to spend that time with us. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. church we are your church we need your power we need your power in us we seek your kingdom first we hunger and we thirst refuse to waste our lives for your our joy and pride see the captive's heart sick, the poor in peace. We lay down our lives for heaven's cause. We are your church. We are your church. We pray revive this earth. All right, let's sing it. Build your kingdom here. We'll build your kingdom here. With the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand. Heal our streets and land. Set your church on fire. When this nation back, change the atmosphere. Build your Unleash your kingdom power. Unleash your kingdom power. Reaching the near and far. No force of hell can stop. Your beauty changing hearts. You made us for much more than this. Wake the kingdom see in us. Fill us with your strength and love of Christ. We are your church. We are your church. Let's hear you. We are the hope on earth. Build your kingdom here. Let the darkness fear. Show your mighty hand. Heal our streets and church on fire when this nation back change the atmosphere join your kingdom here build your kingdom here let the darkness flee show your mighty hand heal our streets and
praise Him with clapping hands this morning. Amen. Let's give thanks to God this morning by singing loud and singing to Him. Amen. Wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide. This by the doors. I try with all my might, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting, a vagabond. And just when I ran out of road, I met a man. He told me that I was not alone. You picked me up and turned me around and placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Savior, because you healed my heart and changed my name. Forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the Master. I thank the Savior and I thank God. I cannot deny what I see. Got no choice but to believe. My doubts are burning like ashes in the wind. So, so long to my old friend. Burden and bitterness, you can just keep them moving. No, you ain't welcome here. From now till I walk streets of gold, I'll sing of how you saved my soul. This wayward son has found his way back home. Because you knew my heart and changed my name Forever free, I'm not the same I thank the Master, I thank the Savior I thank God When I lost another one, I am free I am free, I am free Hell lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Sing it louder. Hell lost another one. I am free. And I am free. And I am free. I am free. Hell lost another one. You heal my heart and change my name Forever free, I'm not the same I thank the Master, I thank the Savior And I thank God And I thank God I just thank Him We go to the book of Numbers. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to Aaron and his son saying, thus you shall bless the people of Israel. You shall say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So we're going to sing those same words right now, the words that God spoke, the words that we read hopefully daily in our Bibles, and uh, we're going to sing those words today. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. Make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace.
God is good. Amen. Hebrews 4 says, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Today, we are reminded of the sacrifice of our Savior. His body broken, his blood spilled, the weight of our sin crushing his shoulders. Today, we confess our unrighteousness 
We lay down our arrogance. We surrender in obedience at the foot of the cross. Today, we remember. So I'd say we have uh, all been to some big deal meals in our time, and typically you need invited to those. Um, I'm sure some of us have crashed some before. Uh, maybe it's a wedding meal, and the bride or groom invited you. Probably for sure a Thanksgiving meal, uh, invited by friends or family or something along those lines. Maybe the company you work for hosts a Christmas party, and based on your position, you're invited to attend. But there's all one big deal meal we're all invited to attend. But it's a little different. John 6, 53 through 58 says, So Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life in yourselves. The one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Because my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. The one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father. So the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. It's not like the manna your ancestors ate and they died. The one who eats this bread will live forever. So it's different with Jesus. In John 6 there, Jesus wasn't saying, hey, you must participate in the Lord's Supper, communion, to get to heaven, because it's much bigger than that. He's giving us an, an analogy about this big deal meal that we're invited to. The practice of communion is intended to remind us of this. See, we gotta remember that Jesus, the Son of God, gave everything for us. We're not invited to this big deal meal because of who we are or for anything that we've done personally. We are invited because of who Jesus is and what he has done for us. This means we don't get to come eat whatever we want. You know, we might believe that God allows us to sit with him, filled up with our good deeds, our family name, church affiliation, religion, but that's not, that's not true. The only true food and drink is Jesus' flesh and blood. Simply put, eternal life comes only from believing in him. There is no other way to get invited to this table. Belief in him and following what he does is how we are invited. Jesus wants all of us, our whole being. We don't get to come to the table simply for a snack, just because we're bored, we're curious. We get to come because Jesus poured out his love for us, flesh and bone, and he asks that we bring it all in surrender. So I've been asking myself, what would it look like for you to bring it all to Jesus in total surrender? What's holding you back? Because I know surrender's tough, a battle that I have every day. So as we take communion this morning, let's ask God, what else can we surrender? What are we holding on to?
Hey, good morning. Good to see you. I'm glad you're in church. Whether you're a uh, few people are joining us online as well, I appreciate those folks, but thanks for being where I can look at you. I really appreciate that. Oli and Lena, Oli kissed Lena goodbye. He was on his way to a golf weekend. He went to a very posh, expensive golf resort, and he and his foursome were, which would be three other guys, were on the, on the putting green, practice green, getting ready to, to play golf. He saw his old friend Lars. Oh, Lars, good to see you. I haven't seen you for so long. And, uh, you, know, you know how they, they, they do all that, yeah, yeah, good to see you business. And as they were talking, uh, a beautiful young lady walked up and said to Lars, hey, I'm going to go to the pool. They're all Norwegian. I'm going to go to the pool, and uh, I, after, after your round of golf, have a good round, I'll, I'll meet you for supper. And Oli looked at Lars and said, Lars, who was that? Is that your granddaughter? He said, no, that's, that's my new wife. He said, your wife? How old is she? 27. Said, well, how old are you? He said, well, I'm, I'm 77. He said, well, how did you get her to marry you? He said, simple, I just lied about my age. Oh, he said, you told her you were 57? No, I told her I was 97. <laughs> how about it? How about that? It's a, it's a real temptation not to be real. That's my sermon. Okay? We're always tempted not to be real. And one of the things that tempts us that way is social media. Because social media, and I'm not opposed to it at all, kind of, not really. Social media, it, it tempts you to put your best foot forward. It's your highlight reel. It's your, this is how I look when things are going well. You know, I, they don't let me take pictures anymore. Because they, they say, take our picture. I go, Boom, 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 boom. I just keep hitting until I'm, certainly one of them will be okay. But I'm not, I'm not it, for social media, you have to have the, the lighting has to be right. We have to be happy, smiling. The clothes have to be perfect. And it's just, it's just not real. By the way, a couple years ago on vacation, we had our picture taken in front of a yacht, Julie and I, and somebody said, oh, beautiful, I lo love your new yacht. They won't even let me on the dock next to the yacht. Okay, that's locked. I can't get there. But it's, it makes for a, a nice picture, and we, we look good on social media. Now, this um, be real. Okay, how many of you have the, it's a new app. It's not, maybe it's not that new. How many have the app on your phone, be real? I got, anybody else want to admit it? To anybody else? No, I, yeah, thank you very much. There are hands up all over the auditorium. Let's pray. It's not really. <clears throat> Here's what be real is. It's a, an app. That if you have it on your phone, it goes off once a day, and you have two minutes to take pictures. A, a, a real-life snapshot of yourself doing whatever it is you're doing, no matter how boring it is, okay? and, also, and no matter how bad you look, you know, it's, but it's, it's a real picture of how you are at that moment, and then you take a picture of whatever you're looking at at that moment. So for me, it's like 8.30 at night, it goes off, and here I am half asleep watching TV, turn around, it's the Golden Bachelor. You know, it's like, ugh. And, and so that's why I don't have be real, because nobody wants to see the real me. Okay, I prefer to give you a little sanitized version of what's going on. People of faith struggle with this idea of being real, and the, the key to the Sermon on the Mount, which we're looking at in Matthew 6 today, is verse, chapter 5, verse 20, when Jesus said, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you have no part in the kingdom of heaven. You have to... And we've talked about exceeding righteousness and what it means as far as anger and lust and revenge and the vows and all those kind of things. But today he, he turns it a little bit. He talks about, a little bit about hypocrisy. Matthew 6, 1. Beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father who is in heaven. Now, he's talking about posing. Okay, be, be careful of being a poser. We think of hypocrisy usually as somebody who does not do what they know. They, they, they say one thing and they do the other. Okay? They, 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 the, the talk is right, but the walk is wrong, and we hate hypocrites, don't we? I don't care. What, what, we just hate hypocrites because they, they try to get you to live like this, but they're down here and they don't care. That's not the kind of hypocrite Jesus is talking about. He's talking about the kind of person who does the right thing for the wrong reason. Okay? And that also he calls hypocrisy. So let me just read chapter 6 to you a little bit. So when you give to the poor, do not sound the trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and streets, 
so they may be honored by men. Notice their motivation. Truly I say to you, they have the reward in full. But when you give to the poor, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, for that way your giving will be in secret. The Father who sees what's done in secret will reward you. Okay, so he talks about giving. Then he talks about prayer. When you pray, you're not to be like the hypocrites. They love to stand and pray in the synagogues. That sounds good. And on the street corners, so that they may be seen by men. Truly I say to you, they have the reward in full. But you, when you pray, go into your inner room, close your door, pray to your Father who is in secret. The Father who sees in secret uh, will reward you. Verse 16. Whenever you fast... Do not put on a gloomy face as the hypocrites do. They neglect their appearance so that they'll be noticed by men when they're fasting. Truly I say to you, they have the reward in full. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face. So your fasting will not be noticed by men, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees what it's done in secret will reward you. Now, that's pretty plain teaching. I'm going to give you four words of application about this. And just observation from this. Number one is this. The king expects us, King Jesus expects us to pursue righteousness by being involved in spiritual disciplines. Okay, so if you want to be a Christian and you're trying to be a Christian, that's why you're here, right? Anybody? That's why we're here. Thank you, Troy. (laughs) You want to be a Christian, and to do that, you have to pursue, you, you do some things you know they're right and they help you get where you want to be. And so Jesus does not say, if you choose to give, because he knows people that want to be for him, are going to give. So in verses 2 and 3, he says, and when you give, don't do it like the hypocrites do. You do it like this. When you give, you, you do it in a secret. And when you pray, verse 5 says it, because you're going to pray. I need more. You're going to pray. And so he said, when you do it, don't do it like the hypocrites, but, but, but close your door. Do it by yourself. Don't make a big show of it. And when you fast, because I know you're going to fast, he says. <laughs> what did he say? Then, then do it like this. and don't, like, don't do it like these other folks do it. He wants followers to grow in righteousness, and that means they will discipline themselves. 1 Timothy 4, 6, and 7. Discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. For discipline is only a little profit, but godliness is profitable for all things. It holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. I've been uh, preaching a long time, and I've, when somebody's faith falters, when somebody's faith collapses, when there's a, a faith failure, I'm very seldom surprised. Because usually, I've seen him neglect spiritual discipline all along the way, and then the faith crashes. Does that make sense? I'm hardly ever surprised. We know the things that we can do to help our faith. It's not rocket science. You can practice righteousness and discipline yourself. There are certain activities that help with that. So I go to the doctor almost every year, like I'm supposed to, and my doctor tells me the same thing every year. Mark, you need to eat a little differently. Okay. You're eating too much red meat. He told me one time, you should eat fried chicken every time one of your daughters gets married. The rest of the time, leave that stuff alone. Okay? So he's talking to me, here's how I eat. And by the way, Mark, he said it would be good if you do a little exercise. Okay? And that will help me to you know, be better. So I go back the next year and he said, looks like you didn't do it. Okay? We have evidence that proves you're not doing what you asked you to do. But it's, it's, I know what I'm supposed to do, right? It's, it's not complicated. So how do I grow as a Christian? It's not complicated. Anybody? It's not hard. I mean, it's not, well, it's hard. It's not complicated. Read your Bible. Thank you, Brian. Read, get, get in the Word of God. You want to hear from God every day? You need to hear. Let's go. Easy enough. By the way, you know what else helps you? Uh, being in church. That helps. And Not just being in the big group, but being in a small group where you can look at people, talk to people. People ask you, how are you doing? How's your Bible reading coming? How's your prayer life? How's your family life? They can actually ask those questions, and you have a chance to to help each other grow. I I know that. You know what else helps? Giving helps. The only solution I know for our greed problem is to give. I tend to want to keep it. Anybody else? But giving breaks that. I know that. Praying, I know praying helps me grow. I know fasting helps me grow. And you go, what in the world are you talking about fasting? What is, it, what is all that about? Well, Jesus, notice he said, when you give and when you pray and when you fast, not if. He says, these are things we can expect to do. At one time, the disciples of John the Baptist came, and they said to Jesus, hey, we fast. And you're, the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your guys don't fast. And Jesus said in Matthew nine fifteen. 
The attendants of the bridegroom cannot mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them, can they? Now, hear that word mourn, fasting and mourning. But the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. Oh, let's just talk about fasting. Just, would you give me three minutes on fasting? Just, just three? I promise to move ahead. Okay. What is fasting? Well, it means I do without something that I enjoy to draw closer to God. It, it, and we usually think about food. We, the, the root of groups that have fast, we ask, do, what, what do you do? it's up to you what you do with the fast. You can go on no food, and you probably need to drink a little water. Occasionally, okay, yeah, and a normal fast, I think, and I, I, is a day long. So you go, you, just one day, you just don't eat, okay. Or you, you may may want to have some juice uh, with that. By the way, when I fast, I always drink a little iced tea. It keeps the headache away. Anybody else? I mean, without that, I'm I'm laid low. So I got, <clears throat> but it's just doing without something like that. So why would you do that? Well, he called fasting morning. One of the reasons people fasted in the Bible is because they were mourning their sins. Nehemiah chapter 9, Nehemiah gathers the people together and said, we need to fast and pray because we've been a mess. Jonah chapter 3, Jonah preaches, 40 days from now, Nineveh will be destroyed because you're so godless and wicked. And the king proclaims a fast throughout. He said, everybody, we're going to put on sackcloth and ashes. We're, going to, we're, going to be, we're mourning our sinful condition. So when you're convicted of sin in your life, and you want to break the hold sin has, fasting is one of the ways that you can do that, try to get a handle on it. I've got a good friend who fasted every Monday for a year, trying to get a hold of it. He had an anger issue, and he said, I'm reading the book of Proverbs, I'm memorizing Proverbs, and I'm fasting every Monday because I want to get, and just, so as a way of mourning his sin, it was a, it's a good idea. Another thing people fasted for in the Bible when they started something new for God. Yeah. Esther. Chapter 4, she is uh, going to go to the king, and she's going to ask for the lives of the Jewish people. But there's a chance she'll die because the king may not want her to come in. And so she says to her uncle Mordecai, I'll do this, but I want you to fast and pray. You know, fasting is like intense prayer. So they did that. Jesus, before he started his ministry, spent 40 days fasting and praying. And another reason we fast is just because, just to spend a little more time with God. Okay, think of all the... Have I made you hungry? <laughs> Some of you right now are going, That's just a hot dog would be good right about here. Think, think all the time it takes every day to prepare food, clean up the mess, throw away the styrofoam when you're done, and, and all that, and then eating. And if you took that time for just a day, you could have time you spend with God. So that, that's what fasting is about. And Jesus said, I, I know if you're a follower of Christ, if you're following him, you're going to discipline yourself for godliness. You're going to give. You're going to pray. You're going to fast. Jesus expects us to discipline ourselves. Here's the danger, though. The king warns against the danger of showtime religion. Now, he's not forbidding the public practice of spiritual disciplines at all. In fact, Jesus, you can, he was there. He watched people give. And a woman who anointed his feet with oil, that was done with perfume. That was done publicly. And you can read the book of Acts, and they brought their gifts to the apostles. It was done publicly. And you... You can't help, when you give, you can't, you can't keep it completely quiet. Your tax accountant will know. Okay. The IRS will probably find out. They may check to see, make sure. Okay. But just know that you can't keep it all quiet. It doesn't mean he's not forbidding the public practice. Same with prayer. Jesus prayed publicly. Before they ate uh, 5,000 folks, Jesus had, had a word of prayer. At Lazarus' tomb, Jesus had a time of prayer. Another time he prayed, and they said it sounded like thunder when God answered his prayer. John 17, a whole chapter of the Bible, is Jesus praying, and that's recorded because he prayed it out loud and somebody else heard it. Even fasting in the Bible was done publicly. You can read Acts 13. They fasted before they chose some men to be apostles. You can't keep those things quiet, but the motivation must be right. Matthew 5, 16, let your light shine before men in such a way they can see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Our disciplines will be seen, but they should be done for the glory of God, not for our own glory. And this idea of to be seen, the first verse you read, beware of practicing your righteousness before men. They do that to be noticed by men. Okay? I, people are going to look, but don't do it because they are looking. Do the things that are right. So the problem isn't doing good things. It's doing things to be seen. So in the TV series, The Crown, anybody? 
Anybody watch that one? It's all about Queen Elizabeth. At one point, in one of the episodes, she takes off. She's out of the country. She appoints her sister, uh, Princess Margaret, to take her place in the official duties while she's out of the country. Well, Margaret thinks the queen is a little too, too stuffy. So did I. Yeah, she's a little, a little too stiff. And so she brings a little more personality to the gig. And so when she meets dignitaries, she jokes around. She jokes at the media. She <clears throat> doesn't act very queenly. And Winston Churchill, the prime minister, comes and, says, and he relieves her of her duties. He said, you are no longer standing in for the queen. Because when you, <clears throat> when you stand in for the queen, you are not you. You're the queen. And Margaret said, no, I'm always me. <laughs> and Churchill said, it's the crown. People don't come to see you. They come to see the crown. Now, listen, people don't come to see us. They do see us. But we have to put the emphasis and the spotlight on the crown, on the King Jesus. He's calling us to remember it's not us, but he who is on the throne. In Matthew 23, 5, they did all these things to be noticed by men. New Living Translation, everything to do is for show. I like what John Ortberg said. I know I'm supposed to be humble, but what if nobody notices? Now, that's the tension we live with. Can I just be honest with you as, as a preacher? Uh, this attention is very real for me, the attention of I want to do the right things to the right things, but I also like people to like what I do. Anybody? Does that make sense? I, I'm preaching on doing things for the glory of God, and I'm worried about how you like it. Does, you see the problem? I'm, I'm twisted. And so are you. I mean, we, we want to do the things that are right, but we don't want people to approve. We want people to say, thank you very much. That was wonderful. It really helped me. But am I doing it for him or am I doing it <clears throat> for myself? That's a question I have to ask all the time. And I don't know how you resolve that issue because that's, a, that's just a part of us. And somebody said, if Satan cannot get you to do wrong, he gets you to do the right thing for the wrong reason, and it, it <clears throat> result is about the same. So in Acts chapter 4, they got some poor people in church, and they take an offering for the poor. And several people sold property and brought the money and laid it to feed the apostles so they could feed the poor. One of those guys' name was Barnabas. And I think Barnabas had a pure heart. He saw people who were poor. He, he sold a piece of land he wasn't using. He, he was able to do that, brought the price, said, here's, here's the money from the sale of that land. And the people called him Barnaby the Encourager. Man, what a great guy Barnabas. See that gift? That's wonderful. Ananias and Sapphira looked and said, you know what? We've got a piece of property we could sell too. Why don't we do that? And then they thought, but let's not give all the money. Let's just give part of the money. Is that okay? Certainly. Is there money? Listen, you give whatever you want to give. Okay? And it, it, it was extra money, extra tithe or whatever. They, you give whatever you want. <clears throat> but they said, let's, let's, don't, let's don't give it all. Let's give part of the money, but let's act like we gave the whole thing. We'll get the same kind of praise Barnabas got. In Acts chapter 5, verse 3, Peter said to them, Ananias, why have, you let the, why have you let Satan fill your heart? Their motivation was completely wrong. Now, can I just say this? It's easy to have twisted motives. When I was in high school, in church, a couple times they would call me to pray publicly. You know, we're getting ready to go home. Mark, please, play. please pray quickly and get us out of here. I prayed, and I didn't think anything about it. But I remember this. I remember having a middle-aged lady come up to me after church say, well, when you pray, it really touches my heart. That did not help me. Because public prayer is all about talking to God. And suddenly now I'm thinking about what other people are thinking about it. Well, that's, a, that's a problem. Be careful not to judge anybody else's public display of devotion to Christ. God, I just Honestly, some people worship differently than others. Hello? And somebody said, well, I, I think she just does that, whatever that display. Sorry, Lindsay. <laughs> does that display. I think she closes her eyes. I think she, whatever moves, whatever. I think she just does that to draw attention to herself. Well, maybe. Or maybe she just caught up in worship to God. And maybe you should be too. Now, I don't know if that means what, how that's going to affect you, but I mean that's what ought to happen. Forget about yourself and think about him. And so that's the danger of showtime religion. Here's the, how are we going to get through that? What's the solution? The king's secret to righteousness is secret righteousness. The best way to keep religion from being a show is to do good when nobody's watching. So three different times he says, 
Do it, in fact, six times he uses the word secret in this passage. You do it in secret, and the Father who sees in secret will repay you. You do these things in secret. Now, we usually get this backwards. We try to hide the things when we do bad, and we try to publicize the things we do well. That's backwards. That's backwards from what the Bible says. Did you know that? The Bible says, confess your sins to one another and pray for each other. And so you, don't, you shouldn't hide all the... Be open about this life as a struggle. On the other hand, the Bible says you can, you can try to hide the things. You, you don't need to publicize the things you do well. I had a professor in college who said, he that tooteth not his own horn, the same shall not be tooted. And there was a lot of tooting going around our college. Okay? You just don't blow your own horn. You don't have to. You just, you're going to do some good things. If somebody else happens to think that's fine and praises you, that, that's okay, as long as you're not doing it for that reason. But don't publicize all the good things you do. He said, instead, be open about the things where you struggle. Doing things in private breaks our attention to the approval of other people. Jesus was intentional about this. In fact, oftentimes he prayed in secret. Mark 1, 35, before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up, went out to an isolated place to pray before daybreak. Thank you. Luke 5, 16, but Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness for prayer. Luke 6, 12, it was at this time he went off to the mountain to pray. He spent the whole night in prayer to God. It was enough for him to know that the Father was watching. And that's really all that matters, just get your focus on him. I like the story I heard a preacher tell that one of his elders took him out for lunch to encourage him, had a nice dinner, and when the server came, the young lady came to serve tables, she introduced herself, and they asked casually, well, how you doing? I, you know, I often introduce the whole, the whole table when they come. Don't you? I mean, as long as we're sharing names, I'm the only one, right? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Strange. I knew that. So she introduced herself, and they, uh, they said, well, how, how you doing? And she said, well, honestly, not, not too well. I just found out I'm pregnant. Our finances are really tight. I don't know how we're going to make it. And the, the preacher and the elder expressed compassion for her. And when the meal was over and the elder bought dinner, he pulled out of his, very quietly, unobtrusively, pulled out a $100 bill from his pocket, watered it up in his hand, uh, folded it in his hand, and handed it to her and gave it to her. Nobody knew. He didn't do it to make a show. He, did, he wasn't announcing it. Just, the preacher just happened to see it. And that's, that's kind of the, that's what Jesus is talking about. Don't make a big show of your giving. Just do what you, what you feel compelled to do. The preacher said on the way back to the car, after he had seen that, and the elder didn't know he'd seen it, they were walking in the car, and the elder said, well, Rick, how are you doing? He said, you know, honestly, I, I think my wife is pregnant, and I just don't know how we're going to make it. You know why? Because we're twisted. Okay, you can just write that down. What's the solution? Well, secret righteousness. Here's the reward the king offers for righteousness. It's the attention of God. He said, your father who sees in secret will repay you. How will God repay us? Well, for one thing, he's going to repay you in heaven. Jesus said, even a cup of cold water given in his name, he will repay. So whatever you give, whatever you do, all the good things, he will repay you for all that. In heaven. Another part of the reward is he will make you what you ought to be. He is molding your character as you do these disciplines for him. But the main thing is you're rewarded with his very presence with you. The king who sees in secret will repay you. He will be with you. He will notice. You'll have his smile. John 12, 42. Many of the rulers believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they were not confessing him for fear that they would be put out of the synagogue. They loved the approval of men rather than the approval of God. The approval of God is the main thing. It's what we're after. Wayne Cadero preaches in Honolulu. He started a little church out there. It's actually a huge church now, but he started a little church a long time ago. And he said um, when the church was getting going, they were broke. That's normal. The new church work, he was broke and had very little. And one of the leaders in the church gave him a certificate for the nicest restaurant in Honolulu. A spectacular place. I mean, it no way they could afford to go there. And he said, we, 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 without, man, we, they got their clothes cleaned up. They had his suit pressed, got everything ready to go. <clears throat> had the Ford Pinto washed and waxed because there's going to be valet parking. Anybody remember a Ford Pinto? Not much. <laughs> he said, I even put on cologne. And we got there. We parked the car, went inside. I ordered, he said, we had appetizers and salad and 
wonderful entree, dessert. And the bill came, and Wayne said, I said to my wife, okay, give me the certificate. And she said, certificate? I thought you had the certificate. Cadero said, we looked rich, we acted rich, we even smelled rich. We're still poor. Okay. The main thing, what you need, is the, pr- the approval and the presence of God Almighty. You, you don't need to make a show. Yeah, you, don't have to, you don't have to perform for anybody. Nobody else has to like it. Just do what he asks you to do. There's an expectation. We'll discipline ourselves. A warning, don't do it for show. A solution, do it privately, and he will reward. The question is, do I find joy in serving God if only he knows, if nobody else approves? When Jesus got through with the sermon, he said, you're blessed if you do these things. Not if you like the sermon, not if you listen, but if you do these things. So this week, I want to encourage you, here's your challenge for the week. I don't know what it'll be for you, but we do something for somebody else that nobody knows about. I, I don't know what that means. Maybe it's giving a, a server at the restaurant a $100 bill. Maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe, maybe it's writing a, an anonymous love note to somebody. You know what I'm talking about? Just put something in the mail. I appreciate what you do. And, and you have to sign your name. You don't, have to, you don't have to draw any attention to yourself. Do you know you could even send a gift through Amazon with a gift card and nobody knows who sent it? It's awfully nice that they've arranged that for us. I don't know what you do, but think of some way to bless somebody without drawing attention to yourself. Let me read again. The pastor read earlier. This is from the message paraphrase it goes like this be especially careful when you're trying to be good if you don't make a performance out of it it might be good theater but the god who made you won't be applauding when you do something for someone else don't call attention to yourself you've seen them in action i'm sure play actors i call them treating prayer meeting a street corner like as a stage acting compassion as long as somebody's watching and playing the crowds they get applause true but that's all they get when you help someone out don't think about how it looks just do it quietly unobtrusively this is the way your God who conceived you in love works behind the scenes, helps you out. And when you come before God, don't turn it into a theatrical production either. All these people making a regular show out of their prayers, hoping for 15 minutes of fame. You think God, God sits in a box seat? Here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. The focus will shift from you to God, and you'll begin to sense his grace. When you practice some appetite-denying discipline to better concentrate on God, don't make a production out of it. It might turn you into a small-time celebrity. It won't make you a saint. If you go into training, inwardly act normal outwardly. Shampoo and comb your hair, brush your teeth, wash your face. And God doesn't require attention-getting devices. He won't overlook what you're doing. He'll reward you. So the challenge is, be real. Father, thank you for the challenge from Jesus today that we want to do things that help us draw close to you. And Father, you know as well that we get addicted to the approval of people. When, when they approve, we feel too proud. When they don't like it, we feel crushed. And Father, help us to be free from the applause of people, from the addiction to approval. Help us seek approval only from you. Father, if anybody notices, I pray they'd give you glory and not us. Help us be real. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Mark. Uh, No video announcements today. So glad you're here with us today. Don't forget on these bulletins. Even if you don't have one right now for service, you can grab one on the way out. There's uh, all the announcements are on the back. We hope all the announcements are on the back. There's prayer lists on the back for you to pray, people for you to pray for. Uh, We'd love for you to do that too. Uh, Great seeing everybody today. And I hope you have a fantastic week. See ya.